in the name of God, His Word, and His Spirit. The only God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, thank you, dear Brother Anthony, for sending me a YouTube, which I suppose was on different uh, televisions worldwide, about someone who said that he used to be a Christian, and then he left Christianity because he wanted proofs. Proofs for the existence of God. Well, and then he was asked about prayer, fasting, pilgrimage, almsgiving, and the profession of faith, which we also find in Islam. First of all, the proofs of God's existence do exist before Jesus Christ, the first century AD, before the seventh century. I mean, you don't <coughs> need to be specifically, specifically a non-Christian in order to say, I believe in God with my reason, with my head. Why do we say that? Because already Aristoteles, four centuries, five centuries before Christ, had thought of five ways, which then St. Thomas Aquinas of Italy uh, then elaborated, in order to prove, to demonstrate, by the reason, without making recourse to any holy book, God's existence. Namely, there is no effect without cause. There is no movement without an agent of movement. There is no accidental uh, beings without a substantial being. Then the conscience of human beings or the unanimity of humankind to worship, to adore a supernatural power, and then the conscience, the voice which approves good and reproves evil in our, in the bottom of our hearts, even when we are on our own, and even when we have all intention to, uh, to reject that voice or to turn a uh, deaf ear to that voice. Being, proving the existence of God does not make you a Muslim. You can be a Jew when you believe in God. You can be a Christian when you believe in God. Actually, in Christianity, St. Paul, in his, well, we have, before coming to Christianity, let's talk about the Psalms. Psalm 13, I think you, you find it again under number 52 or 53, if I'm not mistaken, says, the fool said in his heart, there is no God. Which means that denying the existence, sorry, denying the existence of God is against reason. It's foolish. Which means that reason leads us to believe in God. This is what the Book of Wisdom says. And this is what St. Paul, in his letter to the Romans chapter 1, verses 18 and following, says about the pagans, the heathens, that they, though departing from the creatures, they did not get, they did not conclude to the existence of the Creator. And in this, they were foolish. Romans 12, 1, St. Paul asks us to offer our bodies, ourselves, our lives, 
as a sacrifice acceptable to God. And then he adds, Tin lo yikin latrian imon. Tin lo yikin latrian imon. Lo yikin logic. Logical cult. Logic cult. Logic worship. Logic from logos. The reason. So, here is St. Paul confirming what we read and what he, as a former Jew, used to read in the Psalms, that to believe in God and to offer our lives to God is something logic, logical, reasonable, founded on reason, on causes and effects. Just seeing this wonderful world as even uh, that big enemy of the church uh, who used to be Voltaire, the French writer Voltaire, used to say, if God were not to exist, we would have to invent him. Si Dieu n'existait pas, il faudrait l'inventer. And he used to say that this world, Voltaire, he used to say that this world is like a big watch. And I can think that this watch exists without someone to, uh, to have prepared it and to have fixed it. Le monde de mes merveilles et je ne puis songer que cette horloge existe et n'est point d'horloger. I'm sorry, I am not familiar uh, with English in order to, to give a literal and uh, uh, more literary translation. So, I am telling that, that young man who, who left Christianity you were wrong. You left Christianity because you thought, you imagined, without ever reading Psalm 13, without ever reading, uh, where was that again? Romans, first chapter, verses 18 and following. Without reading Romans, chapter 12, verse, first verse and following. You have, have you never read that ours is a cultural reasonable cult, logic, with reason, thought, and not just believe, believe without understanding. It's never, faith is not to believe without understanding. Faith in God, faith in Christ, in the rest of the New Testament, in the Bible, it's not Believing without understanding. It's believing out of confidence because we trust God. We trust Jesus. We trust the church. When I say God and Jesus, I am not uh, stating that Jesus is a man who has nothing to do with God. As you know, for us Christians, according to John 1.14 and other texts, Jesus is the incarnation of God's word. So, uh, it is not arbitrarily that we ask people to believe without understanding. And Pope Benedict the XVI, who is a great theologian, insists on faith and reason. And Saint Augustine, who used to be a great philosopher, actually the biggest genius of his time, used to say, fide squares intellectum, intellectus squares fidem. Reason looks for faith, and faith looks for reason. Now, the five pillars, and this is good for interreligious dialogue, which you find in Islam, you find in Judaism, you find in Christianity. First of all, prayer. Well, Muslims pray five times a day. Monks pray seven times a day. This you read, by the way, in Psalm 119. Seven times I praise you during the day. Now, nowadays, in the, uh, let's say, um, abridged form of the breviary, Abreviary means brief, by the way. Uh, 
well, five times priests are asked to pray five times a day? Well, they could do seven. And the faithful also are invited to pray the divine office, or what we call the breviary, five times a day. It's not just for, for uh, bishops and deacons and priests and nuns. So, prayer, we have the official prayer, of course, on, uh, on Sundays. It is the day of the Lord, Kiriaki Imera. So, you have prayer in, in Judaism, the Tefillah. Fasting, I mean, even if you don't see some Christians fasting, this does not mean that there is no fasting in Christianity. The apostles fasted, Jesus himself fasted for 40 years. The church encourages its faithful to fast during Lent. Lent is quadragesima in Latin, and quadragesima means 40 days. In the East, we have 15 days of fasting before Christmas, let alone the, the Holy Week, let alone the, the Feast of the Assumption of Our Lady, which is coming up these days. You have two weeks of fasting before that. Christians used to fast on a weekly basis, twice a week. And this we read already in the Didachi, the teaching, the doctrine of the Twelve Apostles, a book from the first or the second century AD, where Christians are asked to fast on, let me remember, on Mondays, no, sorry, on Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesday, Friday. Why Wednesday? Wednesday, it was the day in which Judas Iscariot betrayed Jesus. And Friday, it's, of course, the day of sorrow, the day of the crucifixion of Jesus. So, you have then fasting for, on special occasions. Anyway, so here is prayer, fasting, almsgiving, almsgiving. You find this all along in the New Testament, as well as in the, in the Old. The church does not exist on the tithe, tithe, which means the tenth part of your income, but it is one of the precepts of the church. So now we come to the profession of faith. The profession of faith, we have it in Judaism, uh, to the best of my knowledge, it's twice a day. It's the Shema Israel. Listen, O Israel. You find it in Exodus chapter uh, 6, verse 4, or contrary, 4 6. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Had. Listen, Israel. Our, our Lord Yahweh is only one Yahweh, one Lord. So you will worship him with all your heart, etc. And let these words be in front of you so that you remember them and at your doors whenever you go, whenever you come back home. Well, this is the profession of faith, the belief in one God. And we Christians too, we believe in one God. We say it in Greek, Pistevo is enantheon, I believe in one God. We say it in Latin very clearly, credo in unum Deum. We believe in one only God, in unum Deum. Je crois en un seul Dieu, umen bi ilahin wahid. For us, we don't need to explain this right now, but for us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is only one God, one God, His Word, His Spirit. So, as you see, and this is wonderful, four and a half of the pillars which you find in the monotheistic religions are 
the same. Basically, substantially the same. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, pilgrimage. Well, you have pilgrimage. You don't have uh, prescriptions, exact, minutious prescriptions for pilgrimage in the New Testament. But, but you have indications already in the Old Testament. You have Psalms uh, when, of the ascensions, which means when people were going up to Jerusalem, up to the temple. Jesus used to go to the temple on every uh, feast of the Passover. Jesus, as a child, was carried to the temple when he was 40 years old. So the, the pilgrimage we have also in Christianity, people going to the place of Jesus' tomb, the place of his birth, now retroactively and so forth. So, prayer, pilgrimage, fasting, almsgiving, and the profession of faith in one God, all this is common and in order, when you are a Christian, you don't need to go to Judaism for that. Thank you.